Hello crafty friends, it's Alicia here for Cat Scrappiness and in today's video I'm going to be making a Shaker Valentine card with some non-traditional colors. I hope you'll stick around and see what I'm going to create. Thank you so much for stopping by today. If this is your first time to the channel, I hope that by the end of this video, you'll be inspired to click on that subscribe button below and ring that bell for notifications. If you're already a subscriber and regular viewer, welcome back. I'm so glad that you're here again. In front of me are the main supplies that I'm going to be using for today's shaker card. If I do add anything later, I will be sure to let you know and make sure to check out the description box for links. Over here on the left is the Valentine Quokka set. I'm going to use this for the Happy Valentine's Day sentiment. In the middle is the Hearts of Love shaker card dies. Over on the right we have the new stitched hearts cover plate. And then finally, and the inspiration for my color today, is the new Light Turquoise Pearl Mix. This is like my favorite color, and it has just a little iridescence to it as well, that I think it's going to match up great with some silver metallic. So we'll be adding that as well later. Let's get crafty! To get started today, I'm going to be doing a little bit of die cutting. My piece of aqua cardstock is four by five and a quarter, and then I made a top fold white card base. I chose this cardstock because I thought it matched the pearls well. Using the largest decorative heart from the Hearts of Love Shaker card die set, I place that toward the top center of my cardstock and die cut that off screen. Next, I want to cut a window into the front of my card, so I temporarily tack the piece of blue cardstock in place where I want it to sit later. Now, I did take off some of the tackiness with my fingers, but the pressure from the die cut machine did make a little bit of the cardstock stick to the front. But that's really no big deal because that will be covered up later on. To add a little extra texture to the piece of blue cardstock, I placed it face down centered on the stitched hearts cover plate. I just like the extra detail this gives when there is so much quote unquote white space with that blue cardstock. Off screen, I cut that same heart with a piece of silver foil cardstock and I cut two scraps of acetate into four inch squares. The first piece of clear cardstock will get adhered behind the heart cutout on the blue cardstock. I put just a fine line of glue around the opening and press that down well. I flipped that piece back over and then I added adhesive to the back of the fancy silver die cut. This is going to go on the opening on the front of the card. Once I have that in place, I did let it sit for about five minutes to dry. Now it's time to get the shaker made. Off camera, I added some foam adhesive to the back of my card front. And now what I'm gonna do, because if I add the pearls and then remove the release paper, it kind of shakes the heart all over and the pearls are more likely to go onto the foam adhesive. So I pull off just some of that first before I place some pearls into the opening. Now, because these are shiny on only one side, I do want the shiny side to face the front. So I did have to spend a little bit of time flipping some of the pearls over. This was honestly probably the most difficult part of the card, but once I had them all flipped over, I added that second piece of clear cardstock to the back of the opening and finished pulling off the release paper. Now my pearls are trapped between those two sheets of clear cardstock, so this is going to be much easier to add to the card front. Now, if I had this to do over, I might have put a double layer of foam behind the heart because right now those largest pearls don't really move. But I will tell you the kind of silver lining on that cloud is that the pearls now when the card is standing up they actually stay in place instead of falling to the bottom. 
I added some extra adhesive to the back of my shaker element and then I placed this onto the front of the card. I tried my best to line up the heart openings both on the blue piece and on the card base. Because you can now see all of the adhesive and foam tape on the inside of the card, I'm going to bring back in the white heart that I cut from the card front earlier and we are going to hide that. I used some liquid glue and I placed my heart in the opening. Now originally I had it the wrong way. I did have to flip it over so it would match up with the front heart, but I let that sit for about five minutes to dry before moving on. Originally, I was going to stamp Happy Valentine's Day on the inside of the card, but I decided the front needed a little something extra. So instead, I'm going to be stamping the sentiment with Versamark and heat embossing with Detail Silver onto this scrap of Aqua cardstock. Now you'll notice here that I am using the new Cat Scrappiness Embossing Powder Tool. I did a little intro video on this a couple weeks ago. I will link it in the description box below so you can see it a little bit more in action. But let me tell you, I am loving it. I did go ahead and stamp with the Versamark twice just to make sure the sediment was nice and juicy before I brought in that silver powder and heat set it with my tool. I used one of the dies from the box sentiment strips die set to cut out Happy Valentine's Day. And then I decided to add I love you to the inside of the card. I did set this up in my Misty so I could get a good placement. Once I knew I had it centered in the heart where I wanted, I opened up my card and stamped it with some aqua ink. To finish off the card, I added some foam adhesive to the back of the Happy Valentine's Day strip and I placed that on the card front. Here are a few looks at the finished card. I hope you enjoyed seeing how I put together today's card. If you did, as always, a thumbs up is appreciated. Until the next video, I hope you're all having a crafty day. Bye-bye. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch all the way to the end of the video. I hope now you'll consider clicking on one of the videos or playlists I have linked above. And if you're interested in any of the products or tools I used in today's video, I do have some links in the description box.